Angels are not mythical beings. They are real. I want to show you three things I've learned about angelic beings. Number one, angels can appear in dreams. Now look at the way the scripture words this in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Here, of course, the scripture is telling us the story about how God was confirming to Joseph that Mary was in fact pregnant with the Messiah, and the Lord chose to do this by sending an angelic being. Now notice that the Bible says that the angel appeared in his dream. It doesn't say that Joseph dreamt about an angel. It says that the angel actually went into his dream. Now this is something that I found to be quite interesting. Angels actually have the ability to enter the dream state. Now, I'm not so sure about the scientific explanation for this, the psychological explanation for this, the biological explanation for this. All I know is that the scripture reveals the fact that angels, whatever their power is in the supernatural realm, are able to actually enter dreams and send messages to God's people on God's behalf. If you want to hear from the Lord in more supernatural ways, I want you to type this in the comment section with childlike faith. Simple words, speak to me, Lord. If you're ready, you're available, you want God to speak to you in whatever way he will. Again, write that with childlike faith. Number two, angels walk among us. I think sometimes that when we imagine angelic beings, we imagine them as only being a part of a different realm or only being before the presence of God or only manifesting in full glorification or in full heavenly form. But in fact, the scripture tells us surprisingly that angelic beings actually walk among us and that many of us don't even realize that we've had interaction with angelic beings. Watch this, Hebrews 13, 2. This is what the Bible says. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. The Bible is telling us of a wonderful supernatural reality. Angels actually walk among us. Now, sometimes we read biblical truths and we just kind of gloss over it. We don't really think about it. Or we're so familiar with what the Bible says sometimes that it doesn't really have the full impact that we should allow it to have. But the Bible here is telling us that angels actually walk around in this world. They walk through the buildings. They travel in cars. They interact with you and I. And some of us have even entertained angels without realizing it. Some of us have even had fellowship with them without even realizing it. I remember one time I was running an errand for my wife late at night. She sent me to the grocery store for something. I forgot what it was. And I just so happened to get parking right in front of the grocery store. Like I'm just a few feet from those automatic sliding doors. I get out of the car. I begin to walk in. As I'm walking in, I notice a homeless man sitting behind the entrance. He asks me for some spare change or possibly something to eat. The Holy Spirit prompted me to bring the man in and to leave him with several supplies. So I took the man in. We walked down the different aisles. I started loading his bag with snacks and supplies and water and so forth. And as we're talking, I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but there was something different about him. And we're shopping, we're chatting. He's a little on the quiet side. We check out, I leave him with everything. I go back to my car. I'm sitting in my car and I'm watching the man now leave the grocery store and start walking toward the sidewalk, which was parallel to the main road. I pull out, I back out, I look behind me and then I start going forward onto the main road. I can see the man turning the corner onto the sidewalk. As I'm pulling out, I look to make sure there's no traffic coming and then I make a right immediately onto that main road. Well, I look and I see nobody there. He didn't have enough time to sprint the full length of that sidewalk. He didn't have enough time to run back into the store. Perhaps I thought he went into one of the residential buildings, but all of these were secured with gates. There was no time for him to run forward and finish the full length of that sidewalk. 
There was no time for him to get past the security gate and go into one of the residential buildings. And there was no time for him to go back from the direction that he had come. I believe that this was an angelic encounter. I believe that this was supernatural. Finally, number three, angels protect. Watch this, Daniel chapter six, verse 22. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. Here we see that the Lord sent angels to protect Daniel from the lions. Now watch this, Psalm chapter 91, verses 11 to 13. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Here the Bible makes it clear that the Lord sends angelic beings to protect the ones he loves. My grandmother told me a story about how she had an angelic encounter. Now, she was being curious and was looking down at a pit near a construction site. Don't ask me why she was there. Don't ask me why she was looking. That's just my grandma. She was being curious. She walks up to the edge. She didn't realize that next to the edge of the pit was a bunch of gravel. She slipped on it and started to slide down into the hole. Had she fallen, it would have been several feet. She would have been very seriously injured. And she said that just as she was slipping in, she felt the construction workers grab her from under the arms, stop her from falling, and then pull her back and drag her all the way to safety. When she turned to look and thank the construction workers, there was nobody there. It was true, divine, angelic protection. Now, I know I told you I was gonna tell you three things I learned about angelic beings, but here's a bonus thought. Angels pray. In Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Upon hearing this, the angel of the Lord prayed this prayer. O Lord of heaven's armies, for 70 years now, you have been angry with Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. How long until you again show mercy to them? Here we see the angel praying over God's children. Angels pray. Angels intercede. Angels speak to God on behalf of the servants of God. Now I wanna pray with you. I wanna pray that the Holy Spirit would soften your heart, would help to bring strength to your faith, would help to dispel doubt. I'm gonna pray that the Holy Spirit would help you to be more aware of the supernatural realm. I think this is so important. Many times, and especially if we've been serving the Lord for a long time, we lose that childlike wonder. We lose that childlike faith. We allow cynicism and doubt to begin to weaken our faith in supernatural reality. So I wanna pray that the Holy Spirit would help you to be more aware of the spiritual realm around you. And I pray that after we pray this prayer, that you would begin to have supernatural encounters in an increased manner. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask you, Lord, to open their spiritual eyes Cause them to see the realm beyond this world. Help them to be aware of the heavenly realm and not just this realm. Father, I pray for supernatural encounters. Let them walk under an open heaven, aware of your presence and aware of the heavenly realm. Help us not to be so fixated on this world. Help us to be sensitive to the spirit world in which, Lord, you have many things to show us. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, if you liked this video, make sure to leave a like. It actually helps others to see it as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that notification bell when you do. Also, if you've been blessed by this ministry, if you believe in what we're doing, you enjoy the teachings, you enjoy the sermons, maybe you've come to an event or two and you're blessed by the ministry and you wanna help us to bless others, then can I ask you to consider right now signing up to becoming a monthly ministry supporter. Your monthly support will help to fund all the live streams, all the content, all the events, and the Holy Spirit School. We give all of those away for free. Pay it forward, bless someone else. Sign up to become a monthly supporter today by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate.
Whatever you do, one time or monthly, large or small, it all counts, it all helps. Now, if you enjoyed this teaching, you will love How to See into the Spirit Realm, Three Keys.